While you're standing, if you would uh, turn to Exodus, the 13th chapter. Exodus 13, verse number 3. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand, the Lord brought you out from this place. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. Remember this day. Today is a good day to start remembering. Lord, we ask your blessing, your touch, your anointing, not just on the spoken word, but our hearts. It's in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I have a couple of scriptures I want to use as a foundation. If you'll go to Exodus, the 12th chapter, in verse 21. And then Moses called for all of the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your family and kill the Passover. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of the house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your house to smite you. You see, there's a difference between us. The promises that he gave those who came out of Egypt are the same promises that he has given each and every one of us. In in fact, even greater promises. And you shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. And it shall come to pass when you come to the land which the Lord will give you according as he hath promised that ye shall keep this service. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? That ye shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the house of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses, and the people bowed the head and worshiped. When's the last time you told your kids about some of the things God has been doing in your life? I wonder, do do your children really know how you got saved in the first place? And then uh, Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. Verse 20. And when thy sons ask thee in time to come, saying, What mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord God hath commanded you? Then thou shalt say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's bondsmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders great and sore upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh and upon all of his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from thence, and he made that he uh, might bring us in to give us the land which he swore unto his fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord 
our God as he hath commanded us. Someone asked me this week, uh, do you have communion service every uh, service? And I said, no. But 1 Corinthians 11 and 23 says, do this as you remember what he has done for us. Do this in remembrance of me. So we don't do this for the forgiveness of sins. We do this as a remembrance of what our God did for us. God wants us to remember things of our life that have transformed us, that they become a vivid memory to remember where God brought us from and delivered us, um, even our memory of 2020 when he has delivered us from this pandemic. There are some days in our lives that we will never forget. They are etched in our mind forever. I will never forget my, my first date with this, this girl who became my wife, and we won't go into details this morning. I'll never forget the, the birth of my son who was born at two pounds, at six and a half months, and the doctor said he'd never live. And yet God allowed him to live, and I didn't even know God at the time. I'll never forget baptizing my parents on the same day at the age of 76. I'll never forget the first time I felt the presence of Almighty God. I'll never forget being baptized in ice cold water in January. The time that I was filled with the Holy Ghost, I can visualize the place. I'll never forget two years ago when I ran into a pastor in Mexico and he asked me to preach the following Sunday, and I didn't have any notes or anything, but I put together a message and went and preached for him, and there was a, a great move of God. And as we were coming back to the place that we were staying, God spoke to my wife and said, because you have done this, I will always have my hand of protection on your family. And a month later, my wife went in for a heart catheterization because of some chest pains. And, and the doctors came with forms saying, we're convinced that you have so much blockage that you're going to have to have open heart surgery. And then I remember this doctor walking back into the room and saying, I don't understand it, but everything is clear. There's nothing wrong with her at all. I remember where I was when President John F. Kennedy was shot. Most of you weren't even in existence. I remember where I was on 9-11, and most of you do as well. Yet the Bible tells us there are a lot of things that we need to forget. Past failures and defeats and tragedies and mistakes that we've made that We just don't need to remember. You see, we can be held hostage by our past failures, thinking that we'll never be good enough in order to get the blessings of God in our life. God is not going to help us because of our failures. Why do you think he came? Because we were so good? I wish I could extract the failures and keep the victories, but God didn't design us that way. He wanted us to remember what he brought us out of and how he was the one who brought us out. It wasn't because of our great intelligence. Paul said in Philippians 3 and 13, Brethren, I count not myself to have comprehended, but there's one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before one thing. 
O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? You see, Paul had problems. Paul had failures. Paul had a past, but he didn't live in his past. So there are some things the Bible tells us to forget so we can go on and press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus told the man who was living in the, in the graveyard in Mark, the fifth chapter, he's, he's living in regrets. He's cutting himself with stones, living in the past. And Jesus came to deliver this Gadarene from his past. And God has come to deliver each and every one of us from our past failures, you see. He said to the man, after he had cast out 2,000 demons, he said, go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. Now, you know, if there's a man who is living in a, in a graveyard, has all these regrets, has 2,000 devils, and yet when Jesus came, he came and worshiped him, then there isn't an uh, excuse for any one of us worshiping God. <clears throat> Too many people just want to live in the past. I know people who are living in the glory of high school years and never went on to reality. You know, ladies uh, wish that they didn't have any wrinkles. <laughs> and why is that? You know, oh, if they could only come up with a cream, you know? Glory to God. Men who wish for the days before their chest fell in their drawers. <laughs> Hair today, gone tomorrow. <laughs> Nothing is going to bring those days back. Live in the present and plan for the future instead of the past. Glory to God. Instead of living in the graveyard of regrets, shoulda, coulda, woulda, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. So forget the past, but remember the day of deliverance. You want to go back to that place where you were filled with the Holy Ghost. Israel had a lot of problems as slaves in Egypt. There was a, a purpose for all the, the trouble that they went through, and God had his hand on each of them as they went through their bondage. But then there was a day to remember when they were delivered out of the house of bondage, for by strength of hand the Lord brought you out from this place. Who? The Lord. Moses said to the people, remember this day. Forget the bondage, but remember this day when you walked away as a free person. Remember when you walked away from that altar filled with the Holy Ghost, walked away from that baptism, and all of your past had been buried under water. Don't come back to those days. The enemy of our soul doesn't want us to be free from our past. So as Israel started marching to the promised land, all of the army of Egypt came after them. You know, it's amazing how our past comes after us even after we've started our walk with God. You know, <laughs> we feel so free and then all of a sudden here comes the army of Pharaoh. But God had an answer for those that would come after us to take away our freedom. When the Israelites came through the Red Sea, God killed all their enemies by letting the waters roll back all over them. It was a type and shadow. And when, when our past starts come back after us, like you're not good enough, well, there's the waters of baptism that rolls over. Hallelujah. It's a picture of our new birth. All our former enemies were drowned when we were baptized in the name of Jesus. 
God put our name in the Lamb's book of life, and he washed away everything in our previous life and gave us the power to live for him in the future. God is our partners from another world to ensure us victory in this world. He came to give us victory. No weapons formed against us shall prosper. Hallelujah. We bury the old man with the old enemy. And that doesn't mean that temptation doesn't show up in a brand new dress. You know, in a different way. But it's like a, a blind squirrel looking for a nut. He can only suggest things to us to see how we respond. It's like a hunting dog on the scent of an animal, but once the animal gets to the water, there's no more scent. We went into the water of baptism, and now the enemy can't find us because the scent of sin is completely gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. When Israel came on to the other side of the Red Sea, the only problem that they had, the only trouble that they had was with Amalekites who was the grandson of Esau, the flesh relative, and the only thing we have trouble with after we have gone through the water, it's not Pharaoh, it's not his enemy, it's our flesh. They didn't have any battles in the wilderness. They only had battles with themselves. We remember the wrong things. Perhaps things that we have once been delivered from, please don't testify about your old life. Because if God has forgotten them, why should we remember them? It really brings no glory to anybody. We all have a past, damnable things that have occurred in our life, but so what? We have a fresh start in Jesus Christ. Amen. When things got difficult for Israel, they wanted to go back to Egypt. Are you kidding? You have been made free, but you've got some problems here. But we want to go back and eat the same kind of food, the old music and the old lifestyle. It isn't any different today. We've got a problem, and somehow we find ourselves walking back to the old life. Maybe if we've completely forgotten the old life, we would never be tempted to go back to the old life. Pharaoh held them prisoner, but the flesh came to live with them. Oh, I can't wait to get rid of it. Listen, I, I want to set some people free this morning. The devil may be sniffing around the water, but he can't find you. The real problem is the enemy came to live with you, your flesh. It's the old story of Ishmael and Isaac. Ishmael represents our flesh, and Isaac represents the new born again believer. And the flesh, or Ishmael, was 13 years old when Isaac was born. It had 13 years to entrench itself in his life. In my case, well, the Ishmael was alive for 30 years before Isaac showed up to set me free. And, and, and 30 years entrenching in this flesh. And I have to put down the old man to pick up the new man. And we wonder why we still have occasional struggles with anger and selfishness and lack of patience. Well. Welcome to the new man club. That's what we are. This is a club of newbies. New people. New lives. But God can use the struggles that we have in the flesh to prepare us and also to reward us with a promise. Trouble comes with a promise. We advance by adversity. Affliction has the power to cause us to grow and become everything that God wants us to be, and maybe that's why we're in this pandemic now. 
He's looking to see how are you responding to the pandemic. I know what the media says, and, and I know what government says, but how are you? But who do you say that I am? Peter said, you're the Lord. You're the supreme being. Maybe the question is still the same. Who do you say that I am? Am I the healer? Am I the protector? Turn to... Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Psalms chapter 50, verse number 14 says, Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. He's willing to deliver us, and then we need to glorify him for what he has done. Micah chapter 7. Micah chapter 7, verse number 7. Therefore, I will look on to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemies. When I, when I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Glory to God. I will... Bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he pled my cause and executed judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. We didn't have the ability to free ourselves, folks. We just didn't. Like the lamb who has come to the altar kicking and screaming and pleading. A lot of us came to church the same way until we finally got to the altar and we decided to die. If you have trouble, you, you might think that God has abandoned you, but in all reality, he has put you up for a promotion and blessings. To set a platform for him to show himself strong on our behalf, God is looking for a, a deeper commitment and an undivided alliance to him. David said in Psalms 119 and 71, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. It's good for us to go through some things. Oh, I don't want to, but it's good for me Trouble doesn't have the power to destroy us. 
It only has the power to bless you and increase you if you respond in the right way to it. We come out with a a perfect praise and a purity of faith. Trouble never lasts long. Until the impurities are gone, self-centeredness, bitterness, hatred, envy, lust, God wants us to get purified in our own furnace so that he can give us stuff. Anybody want stuff? (laughs) Mm. Just so we don't get intoxicated by the stuff that he gives us. Did you know that hell works for heaven? The devil is a gift that keeps on giving. Because if we didn't have an adversary, maybe we'd just lay down. But we become stronger because of the adversary. Moses told the people at the beginning of their freedom from bondage, remember this day in which you came out from the bondage. Why? Because there were going to be some battles along the way. But they were to remember the day that they were set free. And if God set them free from the army of Pharaoh, God fed them manna, water from a rock, what's your problem that God can't take care of it? We all need to remember our born-again birth. Even more than our natural birth, it's, it's where we got a complete victory over the enemy Revisit the picture in your mind when you get discouraged. Revisit your healing when you're feeling down. He's done something for each and every one of us. And instead of concentrating on on what's going on right now or even being fearful of the future, why don't you go back to remember that day when God did this for you or God did that for you. There was a reason, Moses said, remember this day in which he came out of bondage. Forget the mistakes, and we all have them, but remember the victories. Hallelujah. I was thinking yesterday as I was putting this together, I I used this illustration before, but it's certainly apropos for what we're talking about this morning. In 1836, a small missions church was the stage of one of the greatest battles that had ever been fought. It was the Battle of the Alamo. And some years ago, my wife and I were able to be there. It's a little uh, church in San Antonio where 1,400 Mexican army troops came against two dozen Texans for 13 days until all of the Texans were killed defending American freedom. Among the Texans who lost their life were Jim Bowie and David Crockett, and they said all during the battle they kept yelling, we can do this, let's fight together. Instead of going hiding in our homes, what we should do is we can do this. We can fight together. We can conquer this because the Lord is on our side. Well, eventually, America won the war. But in every battle after that, they would yell, remember the Alamo. On December 7, 1941, there was a sneak attack on Pearl Harbor, and many, many were killed, some of them while they were even sleeping. And in every battle after that, before the end of World War II, soldiers were determined to fight more than ever to get the victory, and they would shout, remember Pearl Harbor. Church, we've been in a sneak attack since we were baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. All of the disciples were put to death with the exception of John. And I need to remember the sacrifice to finish my own battle. 
I need to remember when the going gets tough, the day I was delivered from bondage. Remember what God has done for us, church. I re- need to remember the moment that the water rolled over my enemies and I walked free into the kingdom of God. I need to remember the, the freedom that I felt as my sins were washed away. But most of all, but most of all, we, the Jesus name people, need to remember what Jesus suffered for us in order to give us the freedom that we have. Remember that he endured so much. He endured a mock trial, the beating that he took for our healings. Remember the nails driven into his hands and Remember his suffering. Not to compare what we've gone through in our little pity parties from time to time. And today we have our own battle cry. A theme that takes us into battle. (laughs) And we can yell. Remember Calvary. I can fight because I remember Calvary. It doesn't matter what the battle is. I remember what our God did for us. It's it's the day we were delivered from bondage. It must stir up a fight in each and every one of us in order to finish our course and receive that prize. So will we remember Calvary? Will we remember what God did in order to deliver us? Where would we be had God not delivered each and every one of us and set us free from the bondage of sin? Would some of us even be alive today? This week, start to remember some of the things that God has done for you. And when the problems come, and the problems will come, just as Moses said, you remember this day. And forget some of the stuff. You can't get what God has until you open your hands and let go some of the junk that we've been carrying with us over the years. Walk out of the graveyard. (laughs) Go home and tell people how good our God is. Would you stand with me, please? Part of God's program for having church is so we remember again. Allowing us to feel his presence so we remember again what he has done for us. And this morning, he can remind you. The altar is open. Would you come?